So welcome back to the Voice of the CIO podcast. Uh, you may recall that we are doing an IT Mythbusters miniseries. We are in episode three of that miniseries, and I'm excited to be back here uh, with my co-host Suresh. My name is Mike Fulton, and today we have a great topic to cover. Uh, good to see you again, Suresh. Thanks, Mike. I hope you're doing well. Uh, always enlightening to have these sessions with you. I always enjoy it. So, Suresh, the, the statement that I th was thinking that we could explore today is the statement, to be successful in a digital enterprise, you have to shift from project to product. And I think we can figure out whether that's reality or is it the myth? What do you think? Well, I think that's a great topic and particularly um, leads out to some of the basics that every organization has to have in place before they can make that leap change. So get it going. All right. So maybe what we can start with, Suresh, maybe you can start with explaining to some of our audience that may not be familiar with this. What does it mean to shift from project to product? Well, that's a, that's a good question to ask. So traditionally, the way we have actually dealt in dealt with uh, in IT and is all about projects, right? So projects are anything which is like having a start date and end date. Um, there is a very predefined scope, uh, deliverables, timelines to do it. And once the project is completed, you dismantle the team. So uh, it is uh, organized for a particular purpose and we kind of uh, do it once for all um, at, at ease and then say, hey, you know what? The, the intended purpose is over and then we, we, we move on. So the question was, it made a lot of sense in the previous historical days. Um, and that's what waterfall ways of working has happened. But I think now you see this, that has already been a shift that you cannot just do it in the way that you used to do it earlier. And it has to move towards from a project to a product mindset, where product is more like a, it is a continual improvement cycle, right? So you make mm -hmm. some iterative improvements over a period of time. So the final outcome or goal is to identify that the customer value is realized. So we are not trying to do that. Oh, I have a tick in the box. I've completed it. Off you go. But more focused on, are we continually improving the aspect to deliver outcomes and achieve the goal that is making the customer happy and getting benefits and value from what we do? So that's how we differentiate between a project mindset to a product mindset. While the product mindset makes it a lot more obvious in a product-based companies like Google, Amazon, Netflix, and stuff like that. But you also have to think through whether this product mindset is applicable in a service industry. So that's where I think the, there is a, a bit of a concern of how we can relate okay. it better. Interesting. So before we jump into that topic about the product mindset in a service industry, what's what's so wrong with projects? I mean, we got really, really good at doing projects in the IT world, right? For a while, historically, we struggled a little bit, but then we started to institute project management practices, PMPs. We got pretty damn good at delivering projects on time, on budget, and with quality. So what's so bad about projects? Well, I think uh, there's nothing bad about projects except that the customer has moved on. So the level in which we are working today, Mike, is it's a disruptive world. And what is good is no longer good enough. So things are changing so rapidly, which also means that the expectations are increasing day by day. So the days of just sticking to what is the scope and deliverables is done and dusted because the rate in which we are doing engagements is rapidly um, unbelievable. So what I mean to say is that the one is the expectations changing every day. The parameters that you govern as part of project, which was traditionally quality risk uh, timeline is no longer 
the order of the day. The focus is on value. So that when you're trying to look at value, we have to understand value lies on the eye of the beholder. So projects which had typically the business case and, and driving uh, results is now shifting towards outcomes. So, and it is very much towards the level playing field. So I started as a project manager some time back in 2010. Mm -hmm. I saw a world of difference catching up because sometimes we have the stereotypic thinking that we have done this work. So we have broken down into WBS work breakdown structures, but in a product mindset, we are talking about value, right? How do you build a value? So small experiments, doing minimum viable solutions to um, achieve that goal. And from an outcome perspective, in a project mindset, you're pretty much inward focus because you focus on solutions, systems, whereas in the product mindset, it's all about the customer because anything and everything revolves around the customer, they are prerogatives, they are uh, constraints, so that's a different ball game where you continuously evolve to make sure that you're able to deliver faster value at a price that is affordable for your customers. So, um, and then we have also breaking down in the teams because it is uh, my team, my resources in how I deploy this project, whereas it doesn't matter. It's one team. They are self-organized the way they are autonomous. So that's a different uh, working model itself, Mike, when you're trying to shift from a project to a product mindset. Yeah, there's a lot there to unpack, Suresh. I think you covered a lot of ground. So we'll come back to some pieces of that. One of the things I think you made a really interesting point on is, is how projects kind of evolved over time. And, and I think what, what we ended up seeing is um, projects evolved to where there was an assumption that you would deliver the business value, the business outcomes at the end of the project, and that you needed to focus on time, cost, and quality, first and foremost, right? But that if you deliver versus time, cost, and quality, the business outcomes would be there. It wasn't that we didn't care about business outcomes. But we just assumed that they would be there at the end if we did time, cost, and quality right, right? Right product, right, as you rightly said, kind of puts that focus back away from time, cost, and quality and puts that focus squarely back on business outcomes, right? It's not that time, cost, and quality no longer matter. They do. In, an, in a product world, we see agile teams focused on two-week sprints and, and trying to deliver with quality in the context of those two-week sprints and things like that. So, Time clearly, clearly matters, quality clearly matters, right? Cost clearly matters, but it's, it's kind of where the focus is. The focus is on time, cost, and quality versus the focus being on business outcomes. And when the focus is on business outcomes, it allows you to react to changes in a different way, right? And I think that's the, the second point I want to make on, on your conversation, right? When, when you know where you're going, Focusing on a project mindset and focusing on time, cost, and quality works pretty well, right? That's why, that's why we did it for so long. As an IT industry, for, for so many years, we focused on the work going on inside our company. We focused on ERP systems, financial systems, HR systems. We focused on areas that we were going to impact and drive productivity, but in areas that didn't change much. What I would say is driving this shift, right, is the fact that we've moved from focusing inside our companies to a digital world where we're focused outside our companies. We're trying to drive value by focusing on our customers, right? And that changes the game. When you're focused on your customers and you've got a hundred, a thousand, a million customers out in the market, what those customers want and need changes much more rapidly, right? Trying to understand that you have to be able to keep up with it. And that's where I think I, I don't want us to throw this idea of project management under the bus in this conversation, which is what I see a lot of people do, because 
for certain kind of work, I would argue that project management is still very valid and appropriate, right? But the, the key is that IT is more and more doing digital work focused on business models and customer experiences and transforming those with technology. And that's where we have to, I think, really deploy this new mindset. We have to now start to drive experimentation because we don't know where we're going anymore. And so putting business outcomes front and center, experimenting rather than focused on the rigor of project management, I think is, is why we're starting to see some of the shift. Would you agree? Absolutely. And I think you bring that point about flow metrics, right? We have gone away from the metric of time cost um, quality towards how quickly can you achieve that MVP? Um, and, and also from that point that you mentioned about experimentation, traditionally in terms of our um, key metrics, when it came to projects, we got it right. We looked at making sure that it stuck to the plan. We had our estimates, we had an actuals. That was plain, simple ways of doing it, right? But now we are mm-hmm. talking about cycle time. How quickly can you improve your deployment speed? And it's no longer time to market, it's value to market. So that's a changing dimension, just not being focusing on moving faster, but has it generated enough amount of value for the customers to stay with you or just move off because they have now a lot more options than existed before. So they don't need to really uh, wait and watch because the, the opportunity is plenty and they can just hop on. So as a provider organization, it becomes important to step ahead, stay ahead of the curve and continuously drive a value conversation from the beginning to the end. Well, that's just changing dimension. So you, you started to talk a little bit in that conversation about metrics, right? And metrics is um, one element of a broader conversation around governance. And, and to your point, I think, in the project management world, we kind of knew how to do governance. Can you talk for a minute about governance in a product management world? Well, that's a great question. So one of the things first, let's talk about governance in a very plain term, right? Governance as a uh, is all about direct monitor and evaluate, right? So you have set the direction from a board perspective, make sure that people are just following the, the um, things well enough. So you had the management layer, that oversees everything working well. And then we had the audit team, which probably evaluates to ensure benefits are realized, there's risks are optimized and resources are optimized. So generally governance has been a very important aspect um, to ensure that we get the right um, uh, value for the investments being made and resources being optimized. Now, if you look at the way governance is adopted in a a project um, centric approach, we have the stick and follow mentality, right? So we had detailed standards, checklists, templates, um, where where it be your PMO, that you have to follow a structure in the way we work. And that has to ensure that people follow the right process. That's how we have actually handled governance. Just, Just do what I ask you to do, stick and follow the rules of the game, right? But if you just look at the governance from a product mindset, it has to be more pragmatic and adaptive. So, which means that while we know that there is all rules in the game that we need to follow, we minimally guard, minimally establish the guardrails, right? So for consistency and making sure that it is um, very specific to the industry that you work through. And you give the opportunity for people to um, to, uh, work and collaborate, for example, uh, one of the things I did collect in my ways of working is the ISO standards, right? So be it 20,000, 27,001, we have a huge audit checklist that we need to fulfill and then do mm-hmm. it. Now that days are all gone because now it's an integrated management system, right? So you're not going to do, um, just do it for one process or one practice in the way we do it. We are kind of flexible because the intent is more important than the controls itself. And that's a, that's a way different the way we operated. Because in I remember still when I used to do ISO 9001, you used to have a huge volume of data as evidence that you need to prove to even be mm-hmm. um, 
say that this worked and you are compliant as part of as an organization. But now we don't require those level of evidence that each and every conversation can be a record by itself. And we don't spend too much time on bureaucracy and, and documentations to, um, to prove that you're doing the right thing. So it's become much more nimble, much more efficient, and trying to focus on value streams as opposed to just process and practices. I think that's a great uh, shift in the way I look at it, um, particularly being a governance expert in doing consulting. It's important to change that dimension to be just enough for making sure that people play the rules, but don't be a stickler for getting things done. It has to be the intent and the spirit more important than the, um, you know, the, the specifics, if you know what I'm saying about governance. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the things that you started to touch on didn't, didn't go completely into, but I think is, is interesting. We do a whole other podcast on, on this topic, but um, in, in the digital transformation course I teach at Ohio State, one of the topics that we talk about in the governance space, governance is a, a whole uh, capability area that we teach, um, is the idea of digital exhaust, right? We're no longer necessarily relying on a separate audit process. We're now leveraging the, the tools that we have to, to capture and collect the digital exhaust out of the work that's getting done naturally and then leveraging and using that digital exhaust to actually manage uh, and do some of the governance work. And I think, I don't know if he coined the term, but a, uh, a gentleman named Charlie Betts, which I think you know, Charlie, um, uh, actually is the first person I heard talking about this concept of digital exhaust. And I thought it was a really interesting idea. And I think it, it's, it's, again, had, if you're trying to, to move more rapidly, to drive more experimentation, to, to be more agile, leveraging technology to help you with things like audit uh, and governance, I think is an important aspect of the, the puzzle. But I think we're, we're, we're starting to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. So I'll pull us back with the, another question here. Um, where would you say that as a, in your experience, talking to companies all over the world, where would you say companies are at on this project to product shift? Has everybody already completely moved to product and nobody's doing projects anymore? Is everybody still doing projects and only a few people are kind of on that product side or are we somewhere in the middle? Well, I think uh, there's a fair degree of um, movement towards the product uh, mindset already. Um, and, and we have seen uh, people doing agile transformations you cannot do agile without having a product mindset. So there is a clear establishment of product manager or product owner responsible is way well defined. So uh, people also are long lived. If you look at the product mindset, they don't change the teams every sprint, right? So the, the teams are fixed. Um, they stay there as a, as a cohort uh, for, for quite a bit of time, about 10, 15 sprints. So they get to know this norming, storming, forming, performing. Uh, one of the things that I think today has been uh, the focus is the level of autonomy, right? Giving the teams the autonomy to, to decide which agile practice we need to do. As you know, agile is just a set of principles and values based on agile manifesto of 2001. Mm -hmm. And interesting 20 years have gone by since agile came into picture. And with that, what we are saying is that allowing the teams to pick and choose whether they want to do um, Kanban, Scrum, test-driven development. So it's it's getting into the squad model that Spotify even talks about. So there's a kind of the paradigm shift where we have moved away from just talking about um, the ways of working to building cross-functional multidisciplinary teams, building in the sense of autonomy and leaving people to do what they do well and just move forward. And that's a paradigm shift I think already organizations are doing it. But there are still organizations with struggling a bit with a call as a hybrid model. I don't know how hybrid model works at the first place, by the way. There is a part of the things that still go on a traditional waterfall project-based approach. And there's a certain things like, uh, which is either on cloud natives and other stuff that shift towards the, the product mindset area. But 
at least what I've seen in Mike that everybody in the industry have to build that product mindset where it's not just about I did my work and I'm done. Have we done everything that is required to meet the definition of done? So that way there is a kind of sense of ownership um, and team spirit to finally deliver something as an outcome. So I think that is uh, definitely, we are, we are making a lot of strides as organizations, uh, but we definitely need to do much better in the way that we can uh, orchestrate the entire value chain and value stream. So there's definitely something that we can do better. So I'm going to disagree with you a little bit here. Uh, and <clears throat> because in my experience, I think there's still a place for projects, right? Right. I think that projects still add a lot of value. And, and I've actually seen situations where um, there have been organizations that have tried to move into this product management mindset and world in an environment that is better suited to, to execute projects. And they've actually struggled and, and not been as successful. So for me, when I look at it, right, I, I see that, again, I come back to this idea that if I'm in a product world, I am probably not 100% sure of exactly what I need to deliver. I need to do these rapid experimentations and learn about where I'm going. If I'm in a project world, I am probably pretty confident in where I'm going, right? I'm, I'm trying to do an SAP upgrade or I'm trying to um, implement a, an, an Epic system for medical health records, right? Um, or I'm trying to do a hardware install, right? All of these things are not experimentations. Absolutely. I know what the end state should look like by and large, right. right? And so I think that I think that there's still a place for projects, Absolutely. and I think that what we see and where I see organizations struggling is when they either go with the approach of it's got to all be projects or it's got to all be products, and they don't understand that there's. Uh, that they're each kind of a different tool in your toolbox and you need to pull out the right tool for the right time, right? I think uh, even I'll give you the example here at my company, Expedient. We've been making this shift in our product development process to really focus on how we drive um, kind of that product mindset into what we do. But at the end of the day, we're an infrastructure as a service company. So some of the things that we do are about hardware delivery, right? It's just basic blocking and tackling things that we know how to do what we're supposed to do. So at the end of the day, it's just project management activities. Make sure you know that you're managing the time, cost, and quality and just do it. The business outcome is not going to change that much. And, and so when we've tried to apply an agile model to some of these stable, static project management activities, we've actually struggled a little bit. And so I think that's been a, a place where um, I worry when I hear people evangelize project to product. I think there's, don't get me wrong, I think there's tremendous value in product management. I'm a big believer in, I'm a big believer in digital product management and the, 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 all of the changes that go into digital product management versus what we've done historically just as product management. But I think there's a time and a place for project management too. And I don't want us to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Absolutely. I think that's that's come to the final piece of it, right? It is true. And I, I love the devil's advocate's position. So I've, I've actually tried to be on the one side of the spectrum, but taking a reality view, um, I think there is a bimodal IT, right? What Gartner says about bimodal IT, there'll be organizations which will continue to do project management practices because there's no brainer. It's foolproof, it's driven by mechanics. You, a lot of parameters are not going to change. So why right. bother to kind of jump in and try to catch hold of something else, which doesn't make any sense when you have to do it. So it's absolutely important. And goes back to the point that any organization that, going to, that tries to change gears will have to think, too much, think well enough what is in the radar going forward? Just because it's a cool thing to do that we want to jump in and then do it. 
and then burn your fingers you spend a lot of money effort resources and get frustrated because it doesn't work the way we work so it's absolutely imperative for technologists for professionals to ask the same question of why do i need to change what's the problem that i'm trying to address what's the guarantee that if i move towards this model it's going to work for your own respective organizations if you don't get the convincing answer for yourself then it's not a good place to start so that's yeah. how i think we should probably uh, make that distinction of whether we need to go ahead or not purely depends on the question are we fully convinced as a group that this is the best thing to do for our company to achieve the goal and that will give us the road to the answer so all right so so we've we've had a great discussion i always enjoy our chats suresh but at the end of the day we're here to to bust a myth or not right so that myth that we're trying to bust is to be successful in a digital enterprise you have to shift from project management to product management what do you think have we confirmed that myth or have we busted it no we have busted it because i think they have to coexist right and just by having that mindset alone will not achieve and it gives you a, a part of thinking inward that it's not always the new shiny toy that matters all that matters is together we should make so i would say it is busted that is no longer required for a product to project to product mindset it helps but that's not the only way that you can achieve that goal and success i uh, you know i think i i think i agree with you and and i hate to i hate to do it a little bit but i got to i got to give a shout out to to gartner here you mentioned bimodal it i have I have for many years kind of poo-pooed and, and made fun of that concept of bimodal IT. Um, but at the end of the day, I think there's actually, uh, through this discussion, I think there's actually a lot of truth to the concept of bimodal IT and the idea that project and product have to coexist. So I think I would agree with you. I think we busted it. Thank you so much guys and for this edition I hope you enjoyed this discussion with us and we hope to see you again and keep your conversation going for the next uh, mythbuster thank you so much mike thanks suresh take care